All right, so in this question, you're going to roll a die three times and you're going to record the sequence of numbers. And you want to find the probability that at least one of the rolls is three or higher. So let's look at an example of what actually we're doing. So here I'm at a website that helps me generate random events. So in this case, I have a random dice roller. Um, I'm going to roll three dice. <clears throat> and I just, I want to get a feel for like, what is the probability that, or like, you know, like how many times am I going to get three or lower? So just kind of taking a look at this. So let's roll the dice and we get a three, a one and a five. If you were to answer what's the probability of getting three or higher, you seeing that we've got a three and a five, which are both higher than a three or higher, right? Three or higher. We're feeling pretty good. Like, hey, I got two of them this time. So let's roll again and see what else we get. A two, a six, and a two. So we still got one that was three or higher. So the probability is feeling good so far. Two out of two, we hit it. One more time. Great, we got one that was three or higher this time too. So does that, we just did it three times and we had success getting a die that was three or higher. Um, we had success on all three times we did this. Does that mean the probability is 100%? Are we always gonna get one that's three or higher? Let's see, kind of feels that way, right? But surely it would be possible to roll three dies and get something that had only ones and twos in it, right? That would showcase not having a three or higher. So kind of watching this, it feels like the probability of that's probably pretty low, right? Because I'd have to get only a voila, such a thing can occur. But it took a long time to get there. So we know the probability is not 100%, but we know it's, it's got to be like decently high. So let's see if we can calculate it. All right, so the first thing we should notice about this question, and it has that familiar structure is of at least one. So for us, the way we're gonna compute at least one is the probability of at least one die is three or higher is gonna equal one minus the probability of a single die mm -hmm. is less than three and then we're gonna raise it to the third power. So what's up with this? Because we've seen it before as probability of at least one equals one minus, maybe I'll write it like this. Right, so we've seen it like this, like right? getting at least one of event A is one minus probability of a complement to the nth power. So N is the number of events, or I'll write it as the number of tries in this case. So for us, we're rolling the die three times. So for us, that's why N is three. Getting at least one A. So for us, A is gonna be three or higher, meaning three, four, five, or six. And then A complement is gonna be less than three. So that's just one or two. Because when you're looking at the faces of a single die, right? So you have one, you could get a two, you could get a three, a four, a five, or a six, right? So for us, three or higher is three, four, five, six. Right, this is event A and less than three 
this is a complement or a prime, right? So just the one or the two. So, okay, the probability that at least one die is three or higher. So on the left-hand side, this big long expression, that's what we wanna compute. We're gonna use the right-hand side of the equation to actually compute it. So let's first look at the probability that a single die is less than three. Right? There's two ways to get this. So if I'm looking at this up here, that means this is the probability of rolling a one or a two. This is the probability of getting a one or a two. And there's two ways to do this, right? I could get a one or I could get a two. And there's six total possible things that can happen. So that's going to be two six. I can reduce this to one third as well. All right, so that's the probability of a complement. And actually, that's all we need. That's the only missing piece. So let's go ahead and crunch this out. This is going to be 1 minus 1 third cubed. So this is the same thing as 1 minus 1 third times 1 third times 1 third. So to multiply these fractions, it's 1 minus 1 times 1 times 1 over three times three times three. Why am I taking the long way? Because I can and I enjoy it, one over 27. So now I have to subtract these fractions. Oh my goodness. This is actually a lot easier maybe than some might think at first glance because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that one into a 27 over 27, right? This is the same as one. So one equals 27 over 27. If I had 15s, I could do 15 over 15. As my coworker used to say, elephant over elephant. <laughs> Whatever it is that you have, I know I need a 27. Let's make this guy 27 over 27. So now I'm gonna subtract off my one over 27 and guess what? 27 minus one over 27. So my answer here, if I needed it in fraction form, 26 over 27. If I needed it in decimal form, I'm going to put it in my calculator, which is in the other room, but I'm sure you could just hit 26 divided by 27 and you could get your number that way as well. But in any case, <clears throat> you can see that 26 divided by 27 that's like a, in terms of probability, that's a number that's close to one for sure. And when we were doing our simulation, we saw that like we kept on having rolls where like we had a three or higher in there every time. So like our first, first two rolls for sure. Then we did a bunch of experiments after that. And it took us a lot of rolls to get one that didn't have anything with three or higher. So we knew the probability of having a role where at least one of the guys was three or higher, we expected that to be high. And guess what? It was, it was 26 over 27, which is a high number. So again, in probability, high probability means you're close to one, low probability means you're close to zero. All 